Hey, I'm Brian Vance, SportBikeTrackHere.com, and today we're going to break down the Hot Bodies Race Bodywork install on our Kawasaki Ninja 400 STG project bike. Okay, I've installed a lot of race bodywork kits over the years, and I can tell you that like the Yamaha R3 kit, this install is more complicated. This Hot Bodies kit fit really well. I was really, really happy with this, especially given the complexity of the install. The finished product is exactly what I would expect. I think it's a real value, the price for this kit. They focused on this bike, they did a great job. Whoever built the mold did a solid job. So, with that said, it's gonna take some effort to get that end result you want, and I'm gonna show you every single step that it takes to do that as I go through this bike here right now. Giving you the quick cliff notes. This is a multi-part kit. You have an upper fairing that is also going to have your instrument cluster installed to it. You have two mid fairings, one on the right, one on the left, that interact with the motorcycle over here, right? So they span from the front all the way back to the tail, and then they interact with this Kawasaki trim panel, right? This is an OE panel that you're going to reuse on both sides, okay? And you know, this is really where the complexity starts to come into place, right in this area. It's important that it fits nicely so that all the pieces come together and play well together. Deuce fasteners, I used four fasteners on each side. Two up here on the upper, two down here on the lower, and I, personally I think that's enough. They have an, another dimple here for a, a possible third. I think that's overkill down there. No need to go with that. Currently I've got a slip-on on this bike. In order to accommodate the installation of the slip-on, I didn't have to do any trimming. This is the OEM bodywork bracket down here. I drilled the hole right on center, it fit great, no problem. Coming forward, the fender, super self-explanatory, right, drilled the holes on center, got a good fit from that, really happy with it. We're going to lower it in a second, I'll show you what it looks like with the cluster on it. The tail section, this is definitely a little complicated as well. If you already have a Ninja and you've done any work to it here in the tail area, you already know that to get the rider seat off, there is a release cable. Well, you see it's down here now and that is not its final resting place. I'm going to need to come up with a bracket to hold it in place or perhaps even some cable ties just to get it up out of the way. But this previously was up here in the tail underneath the passenger seat. When you would release the passenger seat, you had access to this cable that you would then pull on it would release the rider seat. This needs to be relocated. We're gonna show you how to do that in this video. Additionally, installing the tail section is going to require trimming of some of the brackets that are on the OEM subframe. It is what it is. I tried like hell to get away without doing that. And I'll show you the, you see that, that little hole right there? That was me just trying to do everything I could to not cut the brackets off. At the end of the day, I couldn't do that. So I ended up putting just the tiniest little hole right there in the tail section. Not a big deal. When it gets painted, the painter's gonna fill it. If you wanna come over to the other side, to show you the end result we got here. Once again, everything came together real nice. Super happy with it. Plenty of clearance everywhere. It's important to note kickstand, okay? And this being more of a beginner bike, there might be some riders out there that are like, hey man, I want to leave my kickstand. Is it possible to do it? Yes. But you will have to do some pretty serious trimming of the lower fairing in this area. Okay, and that's going to allow the spring and the dowel that attaches to the spring to be able to clear that lower fairing. My recommendation is remove the kickstand, right? If it's a track bike, there's really, in my opinion, no need for a kickstand. It'll accommodate it. You're going to have to do some trimming in order for that to happen. So I'm going to take the entire bike apart. We're going to show you each individual piece, where I drilled it, things I did to get the fit that I have right now. Okay, we're going to start off with the tail. This is the piece I always begin with. 
and in my opinion, one of the more challenging pieces to install on the bike. I'll show you the spots where I drilled. There were dimples there, right, and right through there, dead center. You can see those two holes. I added a couple down here. These weren't there. It's, this is just something I wanted to try to see if I could tie them into that OEM undertail right here. So you may or may not decide to do that on your own. So in terms of drilling the holes, no problem. There is absolutely some modification necessary to the subframe as well as the OE undertail. You can clearly see if you've got your bike apart right now that this OE undertail used to come all the way back here, okay? Well, you don't need all that with the race plastics. So what I did is I determined that for the install that I was doing, the most advantageous place to cut this was right here. And we'll have Caleb get you a good close shot there so you can kind of see the, where I chose to cut that. And I think you'll be in good shape if you mimic that. Fasteners that hold the OE undertail onto the bike. I put something here that had a round head, a flat round head that bought me a little additional clearance when installing the tail. Okay, and I pulled that out of the spare bolt bins that I have from all the installs I've done over the years. The subframe itself, there were brackets that worked for the uh, cable, right, to release the seat, which I now have right up here. Okay, I'm going to move that here in a minute. The brackets are all removed, and I left this very, very rough. I am going to clean that up. It was left like this, so we could show it a little clearer for you in the video. So here, 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 up here, this one over here, I cut all those off. This back here was preventing the tail from sitting all the way down, so I literally just took my thumb and I just kind of pushed that down, and that allowed the tail to sit down on the two mounting holes here on the subframe. So get some good close-ups here to give you an idea of what I did, and please understand this is not finished. I'm going to come in here this weekend, actually, we're going to grind this all nice and flat, a little touch-up paint on it, and do what would be a more professional job, and certainly any wire or anything like that, I'm going to clean that up as we go. Right now we're focusing simply on the race bodywork install itself. From there, get your tail section, and you're going to kind of come over the subframe like so. And even with the trimming that we did, there is still just a, a little bit of a tight fit. It's not super bad in terms of race body work, but you are going to have to still manipulate the tail section a little bit to get the clearance necessary to cross over some of the uh, mounting points, right? The tabs that are still on the subframe. So, see what I'm doing here is kind of getting this subframe slid up into the tail using as light a pressure as humanly possible. And we need to get it as far forward as we can so we can clear these now, okay? And once we've done that, I'll kind of pull outward. And that's where replacing these fasteners right here really came into play because that bought me a few precious millimeters in that spot so that we could get this to dip over. So just continue forward. This is probably looks a little more difficult on the video than it is in, in the real world because you know I'm trying to do this and give the camera room, uh, cameraman some room to operate as well. So once you have that slid on, like so, let's get the fasteners we're going to use. I ended up replacing a lot of the OE hardware with just things that I had in my spares been over the years. This is what I landed on. All six of these are the same size. And please note too, when you drill the hole, you don't want to drill the hole so that the fastener is super tight in it. You want there to be a little bit of wiggle room. And I'll kind of illustrate here. And you see I'm able to move that back and forth. That makes removal and installation a lot easier. And it also allows for you know, a little bit of movement when it's on the bike. It can help reduce damage in a crash, things like that. So we'll show you how this all lines up. You want to get all the fasteners in there before you really put any significant torque to any of them. See back here, the holes line up real nice. 
So just finger tight to begin with. Raise the bike up, put the two lower ones in. Okay, we're down here underneath the bike. You know, this is this is absolutely optional. I'm not even 100% sure that, you know, I'm gonna stick with these long term. There's the secret light on the camera cable found. So we'll get these started as well. You can see I gotta push up a little bit on the bodywork to get them to meet the J-nuts that go through the undertail. And that super secret light is now shining in my eyes. I love that. Okay, I'm going to get the right size T-handle here. And with these two now, I'm going to go ahead and put some torque to them. Important to understand that you're sandwiching the fiberglass in between the, the J-nut and the head of that, right? You don't want to pull so tight you hear a bunch of crunching sounds, but enough that they won't come loose. Okay, once we've got those underneath, secure, same deal here, don't put a crazy amount of torque, just enough. Something else I'd like to mention too is, you know, let's say that you're interested in, in having a Ninja 400 to do track days on, or do some club racing, whatever the case may be, and you don't know if you really want to do it yourself, you don't want to build it yourself. Well, there's a great option that's out there right now. Ninja400R.com, I, I believe, uh, is the URL. It, it is a project that involves Hot Bodies Racing and this dude named Jeremy Toy, who really knows his shit. I'll show you this real quick, the seat. Got these two tongues here. They're gonna slide under, so you put in the Front portion of the seat first, the rear portion needs to drop in, lock down like so. There's the, the fit of the tail with the seat on, okay? Now, back to the Jeremy Toy thing. So if you want to buy a complete bike ready to rock and roll, they have a couple of different levels. Smart dude, building a real kick-ass bike so you can get a turnkey thing and not take all these steps. Obviously you pay for that, right? But understand that resource is there. There is your tail section, and now we're going to go ahead and begin working on the upper fairing. Okay, one of the really unique parts of this install was the instrument panel cluster. The gauge cluster actually installs to the fiberglass upper fairing. All I did here was, right, the holes were drilled right here, got them all cleaned out. These are the grommets that were used to mount up the cluster on the OEM uh, setup. We're going to reuse those now. So you want to make sure that these holes are large enough to accommodate that, okay? And when I lined everything up and drilled it, I did double check with the gauge cluster before drilling it. The cluster has posts on the back of it. You want to make sure that, you know, they're going to be lining up with the holes relatively well, which they did. I'm going to push all that through. Like so. Now we'll get the cluster. There are the posts that we're talking about. Get those lined up with the grommets. Pressure on the back side. Fasteners will be used to secure that in place. A little bit dark in there, so we need the secret light. Pretty stoked to get out there and ride this bike. I've got uh, got some kick-ass K-Tech suspension it's sitting on my back desk in my office, ready to install on the the 400. Very similar to what we did on the Yamaha R3. OK. 
Okay, so get that all secure. Now let's cover the holes that I drilled and the other positions here on the upper. Everything lined up really well, okay? This goes through the uh, OEM upper fairing stay right. They have little bosses that pass right through there. Here's the holes that I drilled back here. I did need to do a little bit of trimming in this area where it interacted with the fuel tank. It's a, still a little bit closer than I want it. I'm going to clean that up a little bit more before I send it out to paint. These two windscreen well nuts are installed and they're used to attach that OEM closeout panel that spans from the upper fairing to the mid fairings that we showed you a little bit earlier in the video. I really recommend if you're doing this install on your bike, get yourself a package of the windscreen well nuts and screws. We've got those on the site. For things like this, that just works super well. Okay, I'll show you the rest of the holes. This is an OEM grommet that is used to capture the Christmas tree clip that comes off of that same panel that we spoke about earlier. You just remove that from the OE bodywork, put it through there. Here is another windscreen walnut. Mirror image of that is on the other side. These holes were, were, you know, were dimpled and teed up when it came here. Basically just cleaned them up and, and that's where we went ahead and installed the deuce fasteners. I used the Riveton style deuce fasteners on this 400 install. Okay. Take your time with this. You know, it's a complicated kit. Don't go pre-drilling everything and then go for the install. Do some mock-up work to make sure things are lining up and it looks good before you charge after it. Okay, now we're ready to install our upper. Slide it back into position. You're able to then rest it on that upper fairing stay. Kind of Secured there. You want to get it over the tabs that are on the leading edge of that fuel tank right here, like so. Find the holes in that fairing stay again. Here are the two fasteners I'm going to use on either side of the fuel tank. These are OE fasteners that came with it. With the uh, stock body work, just reusing those. I'm going to get these started, but I'm not going to torque them down at this time. I'll do that on both sides. And then we'll install the windscreen and the mirror block offs that are essentially the main mounting point for the upper fairing. You can see that's a little closer to that tank than I want. I actually put a couple of little scratches in it. I don't care because this is getting painted. We've got a sweet blue color we're going to be using on the bikes this year. Same one that's on my Gixxer. So now you can see when that sits down, okay, you see how the boss is protruding through? You want to make sure that you've got it lined up and it sits just like that. Okay, now installing the windscreen, right, to the bike. This is really what's going to capture and hold the upper fairing in place. This is a zero gravity screen we have right here. It came with these rubber gaskets that are going to essentially sit here over those studs and then you bolt everything down. Technically, you know, these need to be in there. With that said, it does, you know, it's a, a little challenging to get them in there. And it may be more important these are there with street body work as compared to race body work. So when you're doing your mock-up and your install, it kind of decide how you want to do it and proceed from there. I've done it both ways now. And honestly, you can get away installing without these. With that said, this is going to be directly against the bodywork, and you've got your paint there when this is, you know, eventually painted. You know, that could create some conflict or, or damage that a little bit. So do what you feel is right for you. And we'll kind of show you what it looks like doing it with the gaskets in place. You want to make sure that you're pushing in on the bodywork a little bit. That's going to hold the gasket in place. And you can see where this just gets a slightly cumbersome, okay? You need to make sure that both of those bosses are able to come through that uh, hole in the windscreen. If you pinch the windscreen in between the boss and the mirror block off or the fastener that you've chosen to use, you're going to damage the screen. So just be cognizant of that. What I suggest is you kind of just get it sort of finger tight there. And once it stops, wiggle it around. 
and you'll know once you've gotten it to a point where those bosses are in between there. Like right there, that is good. Now we can begin on the other side. So, you know, it's a little bit of a pain, but it's not the end of the world. You know, is this something you want to jack around with when you're at the track, if you need to remove the fairings and have the gasket under there? It's kind of my thought process there, but... Okay, that all fit good. Windscreen's mounted up. Now we're ready to raise the bike up and we're gonna begin installing the mids on the motorcycle. Okay, now here we have our mid fairing for the right side of the bike. You can see I use ribbon on deuce fasteners, okay? I took my time mocking all this up. You can get an idea of where I positioned everything. And before I install, right, the back for the fastener, let's start over. Okay, now we can focus on the mid fairing. We're going to begin here on the right side. You can see that we do have a total of four deuce fasteners. I used rivet on style. Here's the areas where we drilled the mounting holes. This is a through hole here that one of the tabs on that closeout panel just simply passes through with no grommet. I didn't feel the need to put it back there. Give you a look at those after they are riveted on. This all, you establish all this, okay? building off of the hole on the exterior of it. Take your time lining it all up. We've done videos, we've shown that multiple times, okay? To get the best possible end result. Now installing this on the bike, the mid goes behind the upper like so. Slide that up into place. And from here, the mid fairing then is going to come in front of the upper right there. So you can see how those overlap, just kind of hang out there. We can get our dues installed now. Like so. I used a windscreen well nut right here. I'll go ahead and throw that in now. We reuse the OE grommet right there. That'll help capture that closeout panel. You can go ahead and torque that now. And now we have the uh, mounts to the subframe and the frame of the bike right here. OE fasteners are being reused in these locations. First one started, and I still haven't tightened this fastener up yet. I'm waiting until I get all of these in before I do that. Once you have each one of those started, Kind of run them down, then we'll go back and torque. There's your finished result with that. Okay, and now we have that closeout panel. Had to open this hole up a little bit up here. That's going to accept this tab. You want to make sure you retain the functionality of that. This lines up with the well nut that we put in place. We're going to be utilizing this tab, this tab, 
here and here. This one will go in there. This one I decided not to do anything with because we have a fastener right back here, so I just omitted that. You may or may not decide to go the same route. So let's get this slid up into position, dip that in, come back here. You wanna find those tabs, get them into the grommet. This needs to go behind the upper like that. Push it in until you feel it lock into position. Got the fastener for that well nut that we put in there. Get that started. Come back here and go ahead and snug that up. Now we're ready to go to the other side and install the mid fairing on the left side of the bike. Okay, now we're ready to do the mid fairing over here on the left side. You know, I should have pointed this out earlier too. By design, this kit, you really need to use the rivet on style fasteners. The slip ons are not going to be effective up in this area at all. You can see that, you know, you're not able to slide it over because the length of the tab is going to prevent it from coming down far enough. So rivet on style is what I would recommend. We'll update our listing to reflect that as well. So that when folks order it, they understand that out front. Same installation as we showed you on the other side. Slip it up into position. You wanna make sure that this tab is outboard of the upper. Go ahead and throw the dues in there like so. Grab that fastener for that windscreen walnut. You know, there's different fastener choices you could use back here, a lot of different ways to go. Last couple of years, I've kind of really dialed in on using windscreen mounts for body work in situations like this. I just think it works really good. I am going to have to sort out some type of uh, bracket or way of securing these two fuse blocks right here. They had brackets off the OE bodywork in this area. I'm not really concerned about that. End of the day, you could throw just a cable tie on it. If you're going to worry about either one of them, this one here, because of its proximity to that throttle cable, you want to make sure that regardless of what you do, there is no way this thing can float up in that area. Your controls, your throttle controls, that's something you never want to fuck around with, never want to create a situation where that could possibly bind. So be cognizant of that. Moving forward, got a couple more fasteners here. Secure the mid fairing to the frame of the bike. You can see the holes where we drilled. This was marked real well from Hot Bodies. Get that one started. Another one. From here we can just run these down. And now we're ready to install that OE close out pin. Good. Mm -hmm. Same deal. Make sure the hole up here is going to allow for that to pass through. Also not a bad idea if you remember to tighten this down. Almost forgot that. Run that down. Windscreen well nut was used up here too. Slide that in. Turning over. Make sure that is in position. Holes and everything line up nicely. Good. OE fastener is going to be used here in the back. You 
as we get this painted and go through, I'll make little refinements to this install, like which fasteners I'm using where. You know, I've, some of the lengths are varying right now, and you know, I'll concern myself with that once we've buttoned everything up here and got it all painted. All right, through the windscreen well nut. And now we're ready to install our lower fairing. Okay, now let's go ahead and get this lower on. This is actually take two. And the other take, I look like an absolute monkey in a football. So we, uh, yeah, we just decided to stop and reset. And then I told on myself anyways. So just start that fastener there in the back. I think that'll help make it feel and a whole heck of a lot less awkward when you get the fasteners in. Because you have that little bit of support in the back. Like so, leave that loose. Let's go to the other side. If your kids are watching and you don't like profanity, I apologize in advance. Well, and after the fact, I suppose. Fastener right there. Pretend like that kickstand is not there because it will not be there much longer. All right, let's get everything into your position. snug these up and we're ready to do the last piece which is the front fender okay front fender let's show you where I drilled here this mounting position is going to use a top hat spacer with the OE fastener okay so the hole needs to be big enough to allow that to pass through the one in the rearmost portion, we're going to reuse the OE fastener, and I need to go to the hardware store and get a J nut that's going to accept this. Okay, I don't have that right now, apologize for that. But eventually, what's going to happen here is there will be a J nut that is slid over. And what a J nut is simply it's a metal tab with a threaded nut on it on the back side that holds itself into position, right? It's a lot easier than putting a nut back there, and it's also more secure because it can't just fall off, right? It's held on by the pressure and tension when you spread it to go over. So there's where I drilled the holes. End of the day, this fit well. Let's go ahead and get this started. the forwardmost bolt in on both sides before I do the one in the rear. And once again, don't forget that I do not have the J-nut in place, but ultimately that is what will happen. So what I did is kind of when I drilled the hole, I uh, made it snug enough that for the purpose of, you know, just kind of the video here and the install that it'll just basically hold on to the uh, fastener for us. You kind of see that now, just basically holding it into position. I can feel that there's enough that's passed through that you know, we put a J-nut back there, we're gonna be good to go. It's not uncommon too with race bikes to see the front, the OE front fender we used. It's actually very common. I've done that myself multiple times. So understand that's always an option too, because if you do plan to sell the OEM fairings, the fender's just not a big deal because when people crash, it's got to be one hell of a crash to jack up an OE front fender. It's always going to be the uppers, lowers, and the tails that are destroyed in a fuel tank, of course. So there you have it. What do I think about it at the end of the day? This is absolutely a little bit more of a challenging install. I think you can see that. I do believe this video is gonna be a good reference for you to help get that install looking as good as we got ours to look once we were done. Key points are going to be, you have to trim the undertail, you have to trim brackets that are welded to the subframe off. I think you need some windscreen well nuts. I showed you that. I think that's the best way to do some of these points here. 
the best style deuce fastener to use is going to be the rivet style deuce fastener. You will need a total of eight to do that for this motorcycle. Also, you're gonna to need to go to a hardware store and source a J-nut so you can use the two rearward most mounting points for the fender, okay? Takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of effort, but the end result I feel is really good. Hot bodies, you did a great job on this. Whoever made this mold should be making all the molds. I'm Brian Van, SportbikeTrackier.com.